How long have you been working for them again? Uh, three years. And you've never gotten a raise? Um, no. Ha! <laughs> Lame. I think you should learn to be more assertive. If you deserve the raise, they'll give you a raise. Maybe you just lack ambition. And that's not very attractive to me. I thought that was a bit of a weird conversation for a first date. I could tell she was judging me the moment I sat down. It was funny, too, that she had a lot to say about my job because she didn't have one. Maybe it's because of your name. Henry, I mean, sounds like a weak name. Do you have a second name? Uh, Liam. There you go. That's a much stronger name. I suggest you start using that from now on. Nobody likes a Henry. You would think I should run far, far away after that first date. But I don't know. I was lonely and probably a little bit desperate. Jenna was pretty and confident, and she knew what she wanted. And that's why I took her on a second date. And a third. And eventually we became a couple. She only ever referred to me as Liam. She made me stop using my first name around her. Of course, everyone else called me Henry. But when six months passed, and I still couldn't get the promotion and raise that my company promised me, she told me she would leave me for someone with more ambition. I told you the first time we met. You lack ambition. How are you going to afford to buy me a nice, big house earning as little as you do now? How am I going to retire and be a housewife? Uh, retire from what? You don't have a job. And I never proposed to you. Whose housewife are you going to be? Jenna slapped me. Don't you dare talk to me like that! I deserve better! I think we should take a break. The break actually served me well. Jenna had been living with me, mooching off of me, and making a mess of the house. She never bothered to pick up after herself. I still had to cook, clean, and do laundry all by myself while she lounged around the couch, the bed, or the patio doing nothing. She would wake up, eat, watch TV, sleep, and then do it all over again the next day. And when she got bored, she would go online shopping, buying everything she wanted using my cards without even asking. A few times, she'd purchase big ticket items using my name and ID number on the applications, putting it on my credit. She bought a huge TV, then a gaming laptop, then she went on a spending spree on smart home appliances. She got a robot vacuum, a talking fridge, 20 smart light bulbs, a speaker she can chat with, blinds that open and close on their own, and a bedside clock that was worth more than the phone I was using. All of that financed by my bank. No wonder she'd been tinkering around in my office. She'd been using my details to get loans for the things she wanted. So, with her taking a break from our relationship, I was finally able to breathe. And I was finally able to sort out her expenses. I returned all the things she bought and made sure she didn't ever get access to my accounts again. And then, I decided to give myself some time to relax, too. I was finally able to go out of the house and meet friends. But when I was out at brunch with my childhood gang, she turned up and caused a scene. Uh, who's this? Are you cheating on me? Uh, that's Millie, my friend from high school. I told you about her, and cheating? We're taking a break, remember? It counts as cheating! I'm obviously not on a date. There's five of us here. I'm with my friends. Why are you even following me? Whatever. If you want to get back together, you better fix your act. And you, you temptress, you homewrecker, if I ever see you near my man again, you're going to regret it. And just like that, she stormed off. My friends all burst out laughing, and I joined in too. 
but in the back of my head, I was kind of embarrassed. Everyone at the brunch place heard her make a scene. Even the waiters were talking about it. Jenna was like that. She didn't care. And she always humiliated me in public, blurting out that I was a weak man and that I could never get anything I wanted. She moved back in suddenly a week later. No apologies, no talk, no nothing. She just plopped her stuff in the room and did as she always did. Oh, by the way, I got a job, and it's paying double than what you earn. See? If I can get a salary that high on my first try, and as a new employee, why can't you? You've worked at your place for years. You need to change. Jenna did get a job, and she was earning a lot of money. And all that money she used on herself. She would buy everything she wanted. Even useless things. She bought a bunch of expensive makeup, three huge ring lights, a professional condenser microphone, a high-end PC, and a gaming chair. She said she wanted to become a beauty guru online, but she never once touched any of the equipment she bought. They're all just gathering dust. A waste of money she never uses. What's worse is that when I want to get something or when I spend my own money... She would get really mad. She would be upset the whole day and give me the cold shoulder. And she would berate me at dinner telling me that I was spending money irresponsibly. Funny, because she never used her money to contribute to our expenses. I still paid the rent, the bills, and the pet food for all the animals she would buy. (laughs) She's a bit obsessed with pets. She bought eight rabbits, three guinea pigs a cat, two dogs, and a snake. And yet, I was the one who took care of them and cleaned their houses. When they made a mess in the house, I was the one who cleaned it. I took the dogs walking, and I was the one paying for the vet bills. One day, when we got into a huge shouting match about her wanting me to earn more money so she could quit and do her makeup thing, she said she was going to leave me again. And that was when I got fed up. For good. And I decided it wasn't going to be enough to just dump her. I wanted to teach her a lesson. So, I quit my job and applied for a position in the same company as her. I got in. And I was her boss. At work, she couldn't take advantage of me. I turned the tables on her and made her do whatever I wanted. I made her get me coffee lunch, clean my desk, I would pile huge stacks of paperwork on her station every morning, making sure she had tons to do, and she could never complain or not do them. Otherwise, I would write her up. At home, she tried to whine, but I just zoned her out. She kept saying she would break up with me if I kept giving her a hard time at work, and I would always tell her, "'Hey, it's just work!' Don't you have the ambition to work hard? And that would shut her up. On my first month, I got a huge promotion for all the hard work I did. The boss was super impressed with me, and she took me out to lunch to celebrate. Jenna was super jealous. She got mad at me for not inviting her. She was a huge fangirl of our CEO. She was always talking about one day becoming like her, a girl boss. And so... I saw my opportunity. I started getting close to our boss, and more and more often, we would go out to lunch together. She took me under her wing and saw potential in me. She told me she wanted to be my mentor. She said if I kept up my great work, she would make me VP in a year. I had other motives. Jenna grew more and more jealous of my success as time passed. And she was getting so frustrated that every time she applied for a promotion, she never got it. Thing is, for all Jenna's talk, she was awful at work. She always made mistakes that cost the company money. And she was lazy and always late to work. Even though we lived in the same house. One day, I finally got the job I was promised. I was made into VP I was going to earn seven figures a year, something I never would have dreamed I could do. 
But it was all thanks to our boss and CEO, Taryn. She mentored me and showed me how to be an executive. She trained me and coached me, and she invested a lot of time and effort to get me where I was. That night, I got home late, and I was surprised that no lights were on. There was no TV blaring from the living room, and I wondered if Jenna was out. I was settling into the idea of having a peaceful night when I opened the door and the lights turned on, followed by the noise from a kazoo. Streamers came flying at me, and I saw Jenna's smiling face. Congratulations! You finally got a job worth talking about. Now I can retire and live a comfortable life. So, when do you want to get married? I quit my job today. Let's celebrate! I was floored. I just couldn't imagine where one person could get that much arrogance. Seriously? She was just with me so she could live off of me. She never cared about me. She never planned on being a partner. So I finally told her. My name's Henry. Liam is my second name. And I got this job not for you. For me. I'm done with you mooching off of me. Who said you can just live here and take and take from me? Oh, Mr. Confident, are we? Just because you got a promotion? You're so arrogant. What? You want to dump me just because you're a VP now? <laughs> Good luck with that. Who's going to date a loser with no ambition like you? Terran will. <laughs> what? Yeah, I asked her out tonight. In fact, that's probably the limo I ordered right now. I opened the door, and sure enough, there was a limo idling outside. The driver stepped out, opened the door, and out came Taryn, dressed in a luxurious gown. I'm taking her to La Colombe. The... <laughs> the country's... best restaurant? I've been begging you to take me for months! I don't know. I guess I never saw enough ambition in you to take you. I got into my finest suit, took Taryn's hand, and walked out of the house. Jenna was too shocked to speak. Oh, and by the way, you gotta move out. I'll give you until I get back from dinner. Try not to leave a mess, or I'll call the authorities. Remember, I know where you work. I winked at her one last time, and the limo whisked me and my new girlfriend away. Off to an amazing night.